Hi, Peter Charles here for Fly Fly Fishing. And today let's look at the issue of why fly lines are colored. I think that's one of the common questions when beginners start in fly fishing. Why are these lines so bright? You know, what's the purpose? You know, won't they scare the fish? All these sorts of things go through their minds as to why these lines are the colors that they are. Well, I've got two here in my bin of lines. This is from an old um, Rio wind cutter and this is from an old Airflow Delta. They're just pieces of the lines. And you can see the difference in the colors. Well, back when in spay casting, when these were the only two uh, short head lines in the game really, um, when you're out in the water, if you saw yellow, you knew the guy was using a wind cutter. If you saw green, you knew the guy was using an Airflow Delta spay. And so by just having different colors, the manufacturers were able to essentially have a very similar line but differentiate them. So when you saw them on the water, you knew who was using what. It was fairly easy. And even today when there's dozens and dozens of fly lines out there, I can often tell what somebody's using just by the color of the line. So there is some market differentiation going on. Also, uh, sometimes anglers have a color preference and they may prefer mint green over yellow or yellow over mint green. So color preference plays a part as well. So right off the bat we're talking about market differentiation, personal preference. They have nothing to do with how the line fishes and how the color affects that process in, of fishing. So you do have some issues though with colors when you're fishing. Now you can get into, let's see if I can get out of here without spilling everything. There we go. It's bright orange line. So why on earth would somebody want a bright orange line? And this thing is really day glow, okay? Well, the advantage of this is you can see it very easily on the water when it's floating on the water and you're able to mend it very easily because you can see it very easily. In some lighting conditions, dull colored lines can be tough to see. So if you need to see your fly line, for mending reasons or strike detection or whatever, the brighter the line, the easier it is to see. Uh, now you say to yourself, won't a fish be scared by that? Well, that's why we have leaders. You're going to get some separation between the line and the fly by the leader. So in theory, you're not casting over the fish with this particular line. However, I've got a caveat here. When you're fishing in water that is gin clear and you're fishing for trout, you can spook them with a line like this just in the casting. That happened to me on the Crow's Nest River uh, in Alberta. I, I was fishing a, a, a bend. There was a gravel on the inside. Small trout had moved into that shallow water to feed. I made one cast towards them with a bright line and they scattered. The line hadn't even landed. It was just made one false cast and they were gone. And if you fish New Zealand, uh, they'll tell you the same thing. Don't show up with a line like this. You want a line that has got a dull color, you know, sand, olive, that sort of thing. Something that's less visible. Something else to keep in mind that when the fly line is on the water, so imagine for a moment this thing is over your head and you're underwater and it's over your head. Do you see that bright orange? Not really. You're mostly seeing dark because you're seeing it highlighted or sky, um, skylighted basically, or uh, what am I looking with the word I'm looking for? You're looking up against a bright sky. And so you're seeing this as a dark shape on the water. Plus there's a tendency when, you're, when this cut creates a dimple in the water, it creates black edges in, in that dimple. So when you're looking up at it, you're not really seeing bright orange, you're seeing, uh, a dark shadow of some description. So if this goes over a fish, the fish isn't really seeing the bright orange all that much. Uh, and as I say, when you're talking about uh, bright colors in skittish fish in clear water, it's the casting that's the problem, not the line going down the water. So we'd use a bright orange line like this if we had issues with having to see the line, especially in certain lighting conditions, it can be tough to pick up a fly line in the water. Now you can get stealthier colors too. And I've got one here. This is kind of a sand color. And stealthy colors, uh, often I find, unless there is this gin clear issue, uh, most times anglers go for the stealthier colors. 
um, out of personal preference. They think, oh, I don't like that bright color. It bothers me. So they'll go for a duller color. Uh, and as an example, the Airflow Elite versus the, the Airflow Exceed. The Airflow Elite is a standard weight trout line, and it has a duller color, sort of a sandy color. Uh, and the Exceed is sort of called, I think they call it a pumpkin. It's a little bit of an orange to it. So it's a little bit more visible, but it's a power line. It's you know, designed to drive bigger flies. So you can see when Airflow was designing this, they were thinking in terms of people who are using standard weight lines, casting small flies to tr rising trout, may be concerned about visibility, so they toned it down. But if you're driving a power line into the wind, Airflow figures you're less worried about that, so we'll make the line a little brighter. So that's kind of the thinking that goes into play here. Now we get another type of line, and this one is sort of clear. I've got another one here. These are clear lines and they're intermediate. You can get clear floaters too. And the idea behind the, the clear line is when it's underwater, it's a little, a little less visible because this line sinks. So when it's underwater, it's a little less visible. It's also a, a reflection that air fl um, sorry, fly line manufacturers achieve the intermediate sink rate by removing plastic, um, the floating little tiny floating bubbles that are in fly lines and the dyes from them. So you get more of a clear or milky kind of line uh, and it's a little less visible under the water. But these lines are intended to sink. As I say, there are clear lines that are intended to float to be used in very uh, gin clear conditions where you might want the ultimate in, in a, a low visibility line. Now another kind of line which you may not uh, think about is sinking lines, and this one is a very dark brown. Uh, they're designed to be used under the water, so obviously you don't want a bright line under the water because the fish can really easy see, easily see it then. It's not floating on top, it's under the water, and it's going to shine. This thing here would shine like a neon light under the water, and you don't really want that. So the dark line doesn't, is not that visible under the water. Uh, and it will blend against the background if it's low down. So if you get it near the bottom, it sort of disappears against the bottom. Uh, also, it's full of tungsten. So when you put tungsten into a line, you're darkening it up. So it's pretty hard to make a sinking line that's full of tungsten and make it bright. You won't want to make it bright in the first place. But just loading them up with tungsten tends to make them darker. So when you're looking at sinking lines, they're almost always a dark green, a dark ground, brown, dark gray, or black. And that's common. That's what normally you will see. Also, you get lines that are blue. Uh, this one's an intermediate line. It's designed to sink a little bit. Very common to see intermediate lines that are also a blue color. Uh, I, this is sort of, again, it's meant to you know blend with the blue sky kind of thing. Very common also for salt water co applications to see blue lines. A uh, lot of blue sky. So, you can get some other colors. I've got a bunch of other colors here. I've got white, I've got yellow, I've got two shades of green. And a lot of this is, as I say, just market differentiation and appealing to uh, the, the angler's color preference. Uh, and when you're looking at these, there's really no reason why one over the other in many cases. It's just, as I say, differentiation. So that's it. That's basically colors. Uh, the important thing for us as anglers is being able to see the line on the water for mending purposes and strike detection, uh, having a dull line that you can't, uh, that's more difficult for the fish to see in gin clear conditions. And that's mostly involved your casting as opposed to uh, when it's on the water. Uh, and, you know, other than that, it, it's, you know, whatever you want to use. So there is some thought and some reasons why we have these different colors, but the bottom line is there is not a big deal in most of our fishing situations. So, you know, there you go. That's why lines are colored. Cheers.